Good day, everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about summarizing and paraphrasing. This is the lesson three of our subject, EAPP. So the title of this lesson is Summarizing and Paraphrasing. Our lesson objectives, at the end of the lesson, you will be able to Explain the function of paragraphs in a longer text in order to write coherent summaries. Summarize and paraphrase paragraphs and appreciate the value of intellectual honesty. Writing a good summary. A summary is a short of abbreviated version of a long text. To be able to shorten something to about a quarter of its original length, and still be faithful to its content, you should express only the text essential points. This means that you can skip the specifics and just present the central idea and main supporting details. This means that a summary is a comprehensive and brief or concise form of a text. Hence, when you summarize, you are going to take larger selections of text and reduce them to bare essentials, such as the gist, key ideas, and main points that make the overall sense or meaning of the text. This means that you are going to distill, condense, or reduce the overall text to its primary ideas. And because you are cutting short the original, you should not add ideas, your own or someone else's to it. Equally important, you should try your best to express these ideas in your own words. Refrain from copying unless the original wording is so precise and beautiful that it will lose these virtues if you use your own words. When you summarize, do not add ideas of your own that could imply meanings other than the original text. You have to remain faithful to the original text. Thus, you have to maintain the gravity of the message. You have to reduce the text, but the gist or the primary message should remain. If it is hard to restructure or reduce the original text because there are no other words that best describe the original text, you can borrow it, but not the whole content. Just get the main point, but as much as possible, you have to condense the original text. If you must copy a phrase, be sure to enclose it in quotation marks because it is not yours. Otherwise, you commit plagiarism. This means that you do not have to look for synonyms for all the important terms in the text. You may use the writer's keywords. You have to do a proper citation when you use the words of other authors or writers. If you want to copy the original structure, just put a quotation mark and cite the author and the year it was published. It's not necessary to change every word. You can still maintain the key terms used by the author. Technical terms such as ecology, genetics, and biodiversity should not be changed. However, copying a unique phrase from the original requires the use of quotation marks. After all, it is the author's phrasing, not yours. This is intellectual honesty. There are words that cannot be replaced by other terms. Hence, you maintain them. Intellectual honesty is very important. There's nothing wrong in borrowing the works of others. Just be honest to admit they are not yours by citing the authors. Give the credit to where it is true. Stealing the works of others is plagiarism, be it intentional or unintentional. So it's a crime. Thus, use the proper citation. How to write a summary. Preparing to write. To write a good summary, it is important to thoroughly understand the material you are working with. Here are some preliminary steps in writing a summary. And these are the strategies you can use when you summarize. Skim the text, noting in your mind the subheadings. If there are no subheadings, try to divide the text into sections. Consider why you have been assigned the text. Try to determine what type of text you are dealing with. This can help you identify important information. You can divide the points presented in a text. Hence, you have to identify the primary ideas that you can find in a text. By noting them, you know that they already implied the main message of the text. 
Read the text, highlighting important information and taking notes. When you read the text, you may highlight the essential parts of the text. In your own words, write down the main points of each section. You may rephrase or restructure the text, but make sure to maintain the meaning. Write down the key support points for the main topic, but do not include minor detail. You may include the minor details that only provide an important support to the major details. Go through the process again, making changes as appropriate. Check your work, go through the same process, and polish your work. Let's have an example. Notice the highlighted part of the text. Global Implications of Patent Law Variation A patent is an exclusive right to use an invention for a certain period of time, which is given to an inventor as compensation for disclosure of an invention. Although it would be beneficial for the world economy to have uniform patent laws, each country has its own laws designed to protect domestic inventions and safeguard technology. Despite widespread variation, patent laws generally fall under one of two principles, the first to file and first to invent. The first to file principle awards a patent to the person or institution that applies for a patent first, while the first to invent principle grants the patent to the person or institution that was first to invent and can prove it. Most countries have adopted the first to file system. However, the United States maintains a first to invent system despite obvious shortcomings. A result of countries employing different patent law principles is inconsistency of patent ownership. Patent ownership is not recognized globally. On the contrary, ownership may change depending on the country. It is not uncommon for an invention to have two patent owners, one in the United States and one in the rest of the world. This unclear ownership often has economic consequences. If a company is interested in using a patented invention, it may be able to receive permission from both patent owners, which in turn may prevent manufacture of a particular product. Even if permission is received from both owners, pay royalties to both may be quite costly. In this case, if the invention is useful enough, a company may proceed and pass on the added cost to consumers. International economic tension has also been increasing as a result of differing policies. Many foreign individuals and companies believe that they are at a serious disadvantage in the United States with regard to patent ownership because of the logistical difficulties in establishing first-to-invent status. Further, failure of the United States to recognize patent ownership in other countries is in violation of the Paris Conventions on Industrial Properties, which requires all member nations to treat all patents equally. The conflict surrounding patents has prompted the World Intellectual Properties Organization, or WIPO, to lobby for universality in patent laws. WIPO maintains that the first necessary step involves compelling the United States to re-examine its patent principle, taking into account the reality of global economy. This push may indeed result in more global economic cooperation. And these are the important notions in summarizing the text. Okay, the first sentence is a general definition. It may be safe to assume that your audience is already familiar with patents. Thus, you don't have to include it in your summary. This means that you may exclude it. So it would be, although it would be beneficial for the world economy to have uniform patent laws. Each country has its own laws designed to protect domestic inventions and safeguard technology. Second, provide the main idea. Look for the central message of the text. Example, most countries have adopted the first-to-file system. However, the United States maintains a first-to-invent system, despite obvious shortcomings. 
A result of countries employing different patent law principles is inconsistency of patent ownership. Next, provide only the classification of the two principles as it is the most important. So only include the major information presented in the text. Just like this one. Despite widespread variation, patent laws generally fall under one of two principles, the first to file and first to invent. Next, ignore specific details about the different principles. The terms are self-explanatory. It is important to point out that most of the world follows one system and it states another. So therefore, if one information already makes sense to the whole text, you may use that information only and disregard the other details that are already understandable in the main idea. For example, patent ownership is not recognized globally. Next, include a description of the problem surrounding variation in patent laws. Since this is an important part of the text, this unclear ownership often has economic consequences. Then provide some support or explanation for the problem, but not all the details. So you may include a supporting detail, but only the one that can entirely expound the main idea. For example, because of the logistical difficulties in establishing first to invent status. Next, describe these other problems associated with differing patent principles. So again, this unclear ownership often has economic consequences. And next, provide some explanation but not all the details. For example, failure of the United States to recognize patent ownership in other countries is in violation of the Paris Conventions on Industrial Properties. And next, describe the action taken to solve the problem. Just like this one, the World Intellectual Properties Organization, or WIPO, to lobby for universality in patent laws. WIPO maintains that the first necessary step involves compelling the United States to re-examine its patent principle. So the most important thing that you have to remember when you summarize the text only include those essential points that can already present the entire message of the text. Right, writing the summary. When writing the summary, there are three main requirements. First is the summary should cover the original as a whole. This means that you have to maintain the overall gist of the text. Then the material should be presented in a neutral fashion. So you just have to briefly restate the original text and do not add other details that may give other meanings different from the original text. Then the summary should be condensed version of the material presented in your own words. So this means that the summary should be a shortened version of the original text. Also, do not include anything that does not appear in the original. Do not include your own comments or evaluation. And be sure to identify your source. So, do not add anything that implies another point that is not present in the original text. Writing an effective paraphrase. If a summary is written to present the essential ideas of an article, a paraphrase is a restatement in the restructuring of ideas for the purpose of clarifying the meaning of a text. Restatement means that you rephrase the original using your own words. However, you don't just change some words in the material. You also need to change the flow of ideas in the effort to make the original meaning clearer. So this means that a paraphrase is a passage borrowed from a source and you reconstruct it using your own words. However, the meaning of the reconstructed statement should remain true to the original passage. Regardless of the different terms or words you use in your own version of the passage, you have to maintain the gravity of the meaning. 
As in writing a summary, you need to identify the source material that you are paraphrasing, and you have to use quotation marks when you copy from the original. That way, you cannot be accused of plagiarism. So you have to cite the author properly to avoid plagiarism. It's already given that you have to credit the works of the other authors that you used in your paper. A paraphrase restates another's idea or your own previously published idea in your own words. Paraphrasing allows you to summarize and synthesize information from one or more sources. Focus on significant information and compare and contrast relevant details. So in paraphrasing, you have to reword the original text. In doing this, you may provide a summary or synthesis of the text. You can also condense into one paragraph the statements or passages of various authors. So this is what we call synthesis. Published authors paraphrase their sources most of the time, rather than directly quoting the sources. Student authors should emulate this practice by paraphrasing more than directly quoting. So most of the time, published authors, such as researchers, paraphrase their related literature to avoid a very obvious similarity to the original text. But still, you have to cite the other authors properly. When you paraphrase, cite the original work using either the narrative or parenthetical citation format. So we have APA or American Psychology Association format. For example, De La Cruz 2019 argues that Internet Addiction Disorder or IAD ruins lives by causing neurological complications, psychological disturbances, and social problems. Or you can do it in this way. Internet Addiction Disorder or IAD ruins lives by causing neurological complications, psychological disturbances, and social problems, then includes the name of the author and the year it is published. Then although it is not required to provide a page or paragraph number in the citation, you may include one in addition to the author and year, when it would help interested readers locate the relevant passage within a long or complex work such as a book. So in the latest edition of APA, if you're going to provide a paraphrased version of a passage, it's not necessary anymore to include the page of the passage in the source material. But if you're going to do a direct quotation, you have to include the page. So these guidelines pertain to when a primary source and paraphrase it yourself. So if you read a paraphrase or a primary source in a published work and want to cite that source, it is best to read and cite the primary source directly if possible. If not, use a secondary source citation. So we have long paraphrases. A paraphrase may continue for several sentences. In such cases, cite the work being paraphrased on first mention. Once the work has been cited, it is not necessary to repeat the citation as long as the context of the writing makes it clear that the same work continues to be paraphrased. So if you already cited the author of the passage, then don't overdo it. If you already mentioned the author in the paragraph, then it's already enough. For example, Velis et Alia, 2018, found that for women of color, sexism and racism in the workplace were associated with poor work and mental health outcomes, including job-related burnout, turnover intentions, and psychological distress. However, self-esteem, person organization fit, and perceived organizational support mediated these effects. Additionally, Stronger womanist attitudes, which acknowledge the unique challenges faced by women of color in a sexist and racist society, weaken the association of workplace discrimination with psychological distress. These findings underscore the importance of considering multiple forms of workplace discrimination in clinical practice and research within women of color, along with efforts to challenge and reduce such discrimination. Or you can do it this way. Women of color, sexism and racism in the workplace were associated with poor work and mental health outcomes, including job-related burnout, turnover intentions, and psychological distress. 
However, self-esteem, person organization fit, and perceived organizational support mediated these effects. Additionally, stronger womanist attitudes, which acknowledge the unique challenges faced by women of color in a sexist and racist society, weakened the association of workplace discrimination with psychological distress. These findings underscore the importance of considering multiple forms of workplace discrimination in clinical practice and research with women of color, along with efforts to challenge and reduce such discrimination. Then you include the name of the author and the year it is published. If the paraphrase continues into a new paragraph, reintroduce the citation. If the paraphrase incorporates multiple sources or switches among sources, repeat the citation so the source is clear. Read your sentences carefully to ensure you have cited sources appropriately. So when you use the works of the same author but written in another paragraph, then you have to cite the author again. And if we use multiple sources from various authors, you can cite all of them in the same paragraph. That's what we call synthesis. Okay, for example, play therapists can experience many symptoms of impaired wellness, including emotional exhaustion or reduced ability to empathize with others. Elwood et al., 2011, Figley, 2002. Disruption in personal relationships, Elwood, 2011, Robinson K. League, 2014. Decreased satisfaction with work, Elwood et al., 2011. Avoidance of particular situations, Figley, 2002, O'Halloran and Linton, 2000. And feelings or thoughts of helplessness, Elwood et al., 2011, Figley, 2002, O'Halloran and Linton 2000. Okay, summarizing and paraphrasing are basic reading and writing skills that are essential to academic success. Summarizing or condensing a longer article develops your ability to distinguish the essential from the not so essential that can be excluded from a summary. On the other hand, paraphrasing hones your skill of accurate pre expression of a passage. Both require the use of your own words and impart the value of academic honesty. So in general, summarizing and paraphrasing are essentials in writing academic texts, especially when you write technical paper and you have to use other authors' works to support your discussion and provide substantive argument in your own work. And that's it for this video. I hope you learned something and thank you for watching and see you again on the next video.